everybody. Are you happy to be back in the house of the living God? Amen. All right, this is a song that's been out for a while, and normally they have to be out for a while to catch my attention or my YouTube feed, I guess you'd say. But this is a wonderful, wonderful song, and I can't wait uh, to play it with the whole group uh, this Sunday, but we're going to play uh, one we've been needing to learn for a while. It's called The Goodness of God. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so Of the goodness of God. Yes, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, come on. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All oh, my life you have been faithful. All oh, my life you have been so, so good. Of the goodness of God. I'm going to 
Father, the goodness of God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your presence tonight, God. No place I'd rather be than in your house, Father, in your presence. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I thank you for each and every person here and watching online. God, we are such a blessed people. We truly are blessed, Father, because you are still in control, God, of my life, our life, Lord, when we surrender it to you, God. I'm not going to look with these physical eyes. I'm looking spiritually, Lord. When I dig in your word, I see it's almost time to go home. We just need to hold on a little bit longer, Father. And the battles may seem like they're getting harder, God, but your light is shining brighter and brighter. And I thank you, Lord. I just ask you to bless the youth groups tonight. Bless the leaders, Father. Help the young people to learn of you, Father. And, Lord, we're so thankful for those that sacrifice, Lord, to take their time, Lord, to teach these young people. God, the next generation, Father, at CFC, bless each and every one tonight, Lord, and keep us safe in Jesus' precious name. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You may be seated tonight. All right. Thank you so much. Can we welcome our online audience tonight? Amen. And thank them for tuning in. But if they're in driving distance, we want you to be here with us. Hallelujah. Services are always available online with Facebook and YouTube. Please share tonight. That always helps us get the word out about the Lord. Hallelujah. There are plenty of ways you can give. If you can't attend, you can get it on the uh, cfcsandycross.com website. Share faith as well. The download instructions for Apple and Android are on the website and Facebook page. You can also mail it in. The old-fashioned way, 7814 South NC Highway 58, Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. Thank you for being an obedient church unto God and giving as the Bible says to give. I thank you for that. Amen. And you can give right now in person by safely dropping your tithe and offering in an usher's bucket at the back or by simply sitting right there in your pew and using your mobile device. Any visitors, please turn in your slips to the Connect Corner. After service, we've got a gift for you. The Ladies' Fellowship Luncheon is this Sunday. Men's is the following Sunday after service. And I want to thank everybody for a great leaders and volunteers rally. We had a lot of people signing up. Teams are growing. Amen. And people are serving. And we thank you for that and thank our new hospitality team as well. Uh, Discipleship class has moved to every fourth Sunday after the morning service. Lunch is provided, so please register at the Connect Corner so they'll know how many to prepare for. And we're going to do prayer requests at the end, so online or here. Uh, You can fill out a card here in person, or you can just drop it on the live feed in the comment section. Tell us your prayer. We're going to pray tonight, amen, and we're going to believe for some miracles in this place. Hallelujah. But at this time, Fusion students as well as King's kids and Junior King's kids can be dismissed at this time. Can we thank our leaders for sacrificing... Their time for our children. Amen.
Amen and amen. Will you turn with me tonight to 1 Chronicles chapter 16? 1 Chronicles chapter 16. I'll be reading from there. I'll be quoting a psalm. Then we'll go to 2 Chronicles. I'll be reading from there, and then I'll quote some Proverbs. We are in a brand new, brand spanking new series about prayer and it sounds to me like from what people told me from Sunday, we got it off to a good start. Amen? We learned how to pray, and we also learned what can hinder our prayers because we want to touch heaven with some targeted prayers. Amen? And I was looking at, uh, I was on social media posting something about the church, and I saw where this was uh, shared, and one of the uh, new, new folks in the church was um, talking about Sister Becky and said, I bet that her prayers are like one of those fiery arrows. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. That means that what they see is wisdom. Right? Hallelujah. But how many know that God can give us wisdom beyond our years? Amen. How many know that God can help us figure out the secret things and the mysteries that the Bible tells us? And so with that, hallelujah. Oh, Sister Becky, you really got to pray now. You really got to pray something up now. Hallelujah. Amen. Guess what? We all do. I, we all want to grow in this, don't we? Amen. All right. So we're in a series called Targeted Prayers. Prayers that reach heaven. Amen. Prayers that get answered. How about that? Are we bold enough to say that? Prayers that came from an, an honest and open and humble heart with pure motives. Prayers that are prayed the way the Bible instructs and are prayed with vigilance against what the Bible warns. Prayers that get results in my favor and further his kingdom. That sounds good. They get results in my favor and they further the kingdom. That means for it to hit my life in a positive way and also increase the kingdom, my life had to be aligned with the kingdom, right? I can't be going in the opposite direction of the kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. Praying this way isn't for a moment. It's not just for an event or a season, but it is a way of life. No more prayer time. It's time for a prayer life that builds a closer relationship with the Lord like you've never had before. This past Sunday, we kicked off our all-new series in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 through 15, where Jesus taught how to pray, and we listed these five steps. We said, tell him how great he is. Amen? You enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. You enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. That doesn't change. We, we praise him. We tell him how great he is. And then second, we declare how great our faith is in him. He wants us to reciprocate the word. He wants to know that we believe him. He wants to know that we have great faith in what he has already said. And then we said, number three, we said we want to clear our heart and mind, recognizing our own need to be forgiven and the strength we need from God to forgive others. Because some things are very hard to forgive. And you need God's help to do it. Right? And then we said, we, uh, uh, number four, we wanted to ask for wisdom and strength to turn from temptation. Because temptation will come. Right? But we need that wisdom and that strength to turn from it in that moment. And then five, this was the fifth one. It was the same as the first one. Tell him how great he is. Leave his presence as you entered his presence. Amen? We also saw how our prayers are hindered. They're hindered two ways. Number one, by us not forgiving others. Amen. When we don't forgive other people, God says he won't forgive us. I don't know about you, but we need God. Come on, this, kind of, this thing kind of hinges on him. You know what I mean? We need him to forgive us. Amen. Hallelujah. We need God's forgiveness, and so he wants us to, uh, to exemplify his forgiveness in our lives. And then we also realize that demonic agents assigned to delay things in our region happen because they are among us. And that's not a bunch of hocus-pocus stuff. That's not a bunch of stuff to get you out there in, in far left field or right field. It's not about that, but we know there is a devil on the loose. 
and with him are demonic agents that used to be angels. They used to be in the presence of God, right? And so when they see sweet incense, amen, incense coming from the people, amen, and going up to God as a prayer, amen, they know what that does in heaven. Amen. They know what it means to worship God in heaven. They blew it. They, took, they picked the wrong one to follow. Amen. They let someone full of pride come and talk them out of following God. And so, of course, they're going to be assigned to a region. It talks about it in Daniel chapter 10 where there's an angelic agent that comes. We think it could be Gabriel because he is coming to give information to Daniel the prophet at 80 years old. He said, you've been praying for several weeks now. God heard you from the moment you started praying. Because you were praying for understanding and you were praying for wisdom. You were praying for some humble, open, honest things. God heard you. He said, I have been on the way to give you the word of the Lord. I have been on the way to encourage you. I have been on the way to empower you. I have been on the way to lift you up in a spirit of revival, but I was delayed. I was delayed by a spirit prince. It's what the one translation says. And he said, I had to leave Michael there. Michael had to help me. That's why we know it won't Jesus, because Jesus wouldn't have needed anybody's help. Because he's Lord over the angels. The angels are under Jesus. He's not under them. But we know that our prayers can be blocked as well. So tonight we're going to review some Old Testament scriptures in this next part of our all-new series, Targeted Prayers. What do we do? If we got devils on the loose and we got demons trying to block our, we rebuke the devil. Rebuke means to stop now. Amen. And we rebuke it and we call it out and we don't cater to it. Hallelujah. We don't justify it. We call it out. Amen. Because you can't let that stuff in anything. It'll pollute. Hallelujah. And so we know there's an enemy out there trying to steal our prayers. That's why we can't give up. What if Daniel had given up? Amen. God wants to see us push through just like the football team at the last yard line. He wants to see us push through and not stop there. Amen. Father, help us tonight as we communicate your word to your people, God. God, just give us insight. Give us revelation, Lord God. Increase us, Lord God. In your holy name we pray. Somebody say amen twice. Then give him praise because he alone is worthy. I'm going to go ahead and warn you real quick. This is real teachy tonight, okay? So I'm not going to probably run and spit and uh, flip and all of that. But what we do have is a lot of scriptures tonight. So I'm going to have you look at one, and I'll quote one, okay? And that's the way we'll do it so we don't have you flipping around too much or scrolling on your iPad or whatever you have. But let's go to 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11. Amen. My, my one and only focus point tonight is this, how we view the power of prayer in our own lives. Listen, it's not going to do anybody any good to learn about prayer if we don't commit our lives to it. Amen? you got to fall in love with something that perhaps somebody might have tried to, to force on you. Amen? And, and, and perhaps we would think that it could be a, a boring thing, amen, to try to spend five minutes talking to God about something you just talked to, to him about the other day. But can I tell you, you have got to approach God the right way. And anytime you approach anything the right way, you're going to get some right things out of it. Amen? Because I serve a God that wants to commune with us this way. But we are busy and we are distracted and we are hectic and we are here and we got to get up early and we need our coffee and we need our eggs and we got to get to work and we got to get uh, make money and we've got to raise kids and we've got to go here and we've got to go there and oh, I got to go to church. We got to do all these things. And praying has been looked at as this boring religious Thing that we treat as something that we know prayer is worship and it's an intimate worship because it is when God doesn't necessarily always have you in the church amongst other Christians amen it is good to pray here guess what this place is called the house of prayer the house of prayer there's a sacredness here 
There's a reverence that should be for this place. But if I have a prayer life, I can't wait till I'm at church just to pray. I've got to have a prayer life. Amen? So how do I view the power of prayer? Guess how you'll view the power of prayer in a greater way when you start seeing prayers get answered. Amen? Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 16. I want to look at two patriarchs tonight. I want to look at David and his son Solomon. And uh, I want to look at the awesome prayer life they had. First Chronicles parallels Second Samuel and serves as commentary on it. Written by Ezra after the exile and as the exiles were preparing to return, it emphasizes the religious history of Israel, traces lineage back to Adam, and spotlights the dynasty of King David. Here in chapter 16 records when King David brought back the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistines. Remember that? It's recorded twice in the Bible. It's in Samuel and it's also here in Chronicles. And, and he brings the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines. And he gave fellow psalmist Asaph. Because how many know David didn't write all the psalms? There was another psalmist named Asaph. And he was actually in charge of David's music. Even though David was a great musician himself. Hallelujah. And so both of them, man, were just kindred spirits on songwriting. And this song of thanks is in it, and we see his heart for God. These are David's words. And he says in verse 11, he says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. When you pray and you are in a prayerful worship, you are seeking the face of God. Amen? He let Moses see his face. He will let you into the Holy of Holies. He will let you into that place. Come on, somebody. It is time for Christians to get their hunger back to be in the presence of God again. It is time for Christians to get that Holy Ghost glow again. Hallelujah. When they didn't care how long the service was. And oh, if it's not an hour service, I'm not going to go to that because I need it hot now like a drive through When are we going to get our fire back? When are we going to be ready to get lost in the presence of God and not worry about if another church or another Christian judges us because we kind of crazy over here amen but how about this we don't want to stop now until we touch God so I'm going to seek the Lord in his strength I'm going to seek his face evermore and I'm going to remember somebody shout remember I'm going to remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Then he said, remember. Somebody say, remember. Remember, remember his covenant. Forever the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Reminds me of that song, The Blessing We Sing. Amen. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it for Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying to you I will give the land of Canaan, later on Israel, as the allotment of your inheritance. When you were few in number, indeed very few in strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake. Mm. Look at that. He rebuked kings for their sake. Not everybody that leads a nation is right with God. I'm glad I got a God that will rebuke a king for my sake. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rebuke a king for their sake, for his people's sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. This song is in line with many recorded psalms and has the many elements of thanksgiving and praise needed in worship and prayer. Two key words here are seek and remember. Somebody say seek and remember. If I am seeking him, I'm pursuing him. Amen. I'm pursuing a God that's been pursuing me. Amen? He's not hard to find. All we got to do is seek him. Hallelujah. The Bible says seek and you will find. Amen? There's a benefit to this. But also remember. Somebody say remember. remember. 
I have to always, you can't have amnesia about every little thing. I might not remember what I wore on Monday, but my goodness, today I found a big mug in the garage at my parents' house, and it said the Grand Old Opry on it. And I remember my daddy went to the Grand Old Opry one time, and that was in 1985. And I was just immediately taken to that place, amen. I was, I was immediately remembering, man, that was a great trip. And who we saw and the places that we went to, that's a powerful thing. I don't remember every part of it, but I do know all the places we went, and I know we had a blast. God wants you to remember the times he brought you through. Because, see, I also remember a time, hallelujah, when I was not saved and I was out in the world as a young person hurting myself and, and belligerent myself, amen, and God brought me through those times, amen, and now I can look back and I have an established course of ministry behind me now. I'm going into my 15th year and I can even see the ups and downs and how even in this saved life, amen, hallelujah, God has kept me and God has protected me and God has used me and God has done great things hallelujah we've got to be able to when we seek God we got to remember what he's done for us don't ever quit being thankful for what he's already done for you amen anything other than the cross he's just spoiling us because nobody ever died for you and told you you could live forever in heaven with him hallelujah all right with that said Verse 23, sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory. Somebody say declare. Declare Declare his glory. Mm. Among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. I wrote fake and false there. But the Lord made the heavens. Uh Uh-oh. What did your God do? Mine made heaven. Amen. Nobody else did. He did it all by himself. Verse 27. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Genuine praise results when we declare God's character and attributes, especially in prayer as well as in front of others. Amen. If you have a relationship with the Lord, come on, when you have a relationship that you're excited about, guess what? you got to talk about it. Amen? Hallelujah. You're going to say, say, if you've got a faith, come on, not just your spouse. Amen? If you've got a great, you got a great marriage and you go around, hallelujah, oh, we get along so good. That's a good thing. People need to hear that. Amen? And if you got a good relationship with your son or your daughter or, or your, your favorite fishing buddy, amen, people will know that is an important relationship in your life. Do we talk about our one-on-one relationship with the King of Kings in front of anybody, amen? Because I believe that when we have broken fellowship with him, things are not going to be functioning right. But when you are right with God and you've got your relationship with Jesus intact, hallelujah, you're not going to suffer no ways as much as you did and even when you do, you're going to have some firepower in that game to get through it every time. How many know that we need to let people know they can have more than just salvation? Amen? Oh, I'm preaching on a Wednesday night. I know you got to get the kids to school, but I'm having a blast. Amen? When we recognize his goodness, we're showcasing his perfect moral nature for all to see. And that same praise of him benefits us because it takes our mind off of our problems and focuses on God's power. It focuses on God's mercy. It focuses on his majesty. It focuses on his love. Amen. The key word in this portion of scripture from King David is declare. Somebody say declare. Have we declared his glory in our lives? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 141.2. I'll quote it for you real quick. Same David we were just talking about in 1 Chronicles 16. Wrote this psalm in the 141st chapter in the second verse. David wrote, let my prayer 
be set before you as incense. Amen. That word that I absolutely murdered a while ago. Incense. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. This is how strong he felt about targeted prayer because what does incense do? It rises up. It's a, a, a good aroma, amen, and it goes up. And he's saying, he's saying, I want my prayer to be that way. Hallelujah. God, I don't want my prayers to stink. I want my prayers, come on. Woo, like I done drown it in for breeze, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? Oh, I wanted to be pleasing to God. God will take me just how I am, but here's the thing. I don't want to constantly go to my father and him say, oh, Lord, what is it now? There has to be a level that you graduate to. Amen. Hallelujah. When I know how to approach the throne of grace, when I know how to approach the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it's not just about I'm struggling from one problem to another that I need him to solve and fix. It's I want to get back in your glory. Amen. Because in your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your presence, Lord God, you will rain down your fiery cloud upon me, God. Amen. And I'll be able to rise up. Like never before because of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Declare his glory in our lives. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. King David remembered all God had done. He told others about it boldly. He showed God's glory to others. He offered himself his time and resources. Prayer was worshipped to David as it is for to you and I, amen. And praise in prayer at the beginning and end is how we pray, right? King David knew that praise unto God was a routine part of life, not just for the, uh, just a special celebration. Give me that teaching point tonight. The more we thank God, the more thankful we'll be. The more we praise Him for what He's already done. And really, I can't say it enough. What he did on Calvary was enough. But how many know he's done more than that? He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Not that you may struggle. Not that anxiety and depression just weigh over you and hold you down in bondage. Not so that you can just wrestle with sin for the rest of your days. Come on. I came that you may have freedom. Amen. Good God Almighty. And there's no freedom like the freedom we have in Jesus Christ. Is any Christian in this place hearing what I'm saying tonight? I got to thank God. And more, the more I thank him, the more thankful I will be. All he's protected me from, all he's spared me from, good God. All he's blessed me with. Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody getting anything out of this tonight? Can I have a few more minutes? The more we thank God, the more thankful we'll be. And the less likely we'll be to take his blessings for granted. Amen. Don't take his blessing for granted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. With that said, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I'll quote two Proverbs after this, but this will be the last place I'd have you to turn or scroll to. Now, 2 Chronicles picks right up after 1 Chronicles, and, and we're originally one book. It goes from the dynasty of David to his son Solomon, who also knew the power of targeted prayers, especially when it came to the humble request of wisdom, right? God gave him that wisdom. David prepared and gathered building materials for God's temple that Solomon would build. When Solomon opens the temple and dedicates it to God, he is then visited by the Lord at night for a second time. This is not the first time. That this young king has been visited by the presence of God, but it has taken place again. He's about to open up the temple, the temple that his daddy had spent so many years storing up the materials. But God said, David, you got too much blood on your hands. You can't build the temple. Your son will. He has it built. They're having their grand opening. They're worshiping in church now. 
The church is open and they're here. Can I tell somebody online tonight? The church is open. And we're here. Amen. We've not gone anywhere. We still like to get together in 2022. We still like to see one another's faces. Amen. We still like to get together. Hallelujah. We're not perfect. Amen. But we love God. We're not in a big city. Amen. We're just country people that love Jesus Christ and know something about redemption. Amen. And we are right here because we love to come together because we know. Hallelujah. When we come together, we are stronger together. Amen? Amen. Woo! And the couch can't replace it. It says, verse 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Are you with me? Verse 12 says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Oh, woo, hallelujah. When I shut up heaven, I'm going to th- come on. I'm going to stay there just for a minute. Somebody make sure of every person that's back there watching a child tonight that they hear this part right here. He said, I'm going to make this house, the house of God, a house of sacrifice. How many know to keep the house of God going, God's people have to make a sacrifice? Hallelujah. You worked all day and you come in here and work a nursery shift. Come on, somebody. You work all day, hallelujah, you come in here and usher. You worked all day and you come in here and serve coffee. Good God Almighty, it takes a sacrifice. Don't ever let the enemy tell you it's not worth it or it's too much for you to carry. Amen? He don't want people to carry it. He don't want people to serve God because he don't want a church to function. Amen? But the word tells us right here, there will be sacrifice there. How many know there's still sacrifice in the house of God? But it certainly wasn't as he was referring to here. But it says in verse 13, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. He says something in verse 14. You ever read this before? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And not only that, turn from their wicked ways. Come on, you can't bring it with you in the presence of God. You can't take it down to the altar and take it right back out with you. Amen? Hallelujah. In fact, leave it in the parking lot and consecrate your heart on this altar. Amen? Because it's when the heart changes the behavior. I done got got ahead of myself. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's one of my favorite Bible verses. Verse 15, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. God's house is a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Verse 16, for now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Perpetually means everlasting, continually, frequently. This verse, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name. This was the church's theme through the COVID shutdown. Right? I even had it on a a, a picture and I had it on the front of the pulpit I had before this one. We kept it up a long time, didn't we? And there was people that was, I don't know, they were giving those things away. I don't even think they were selling them. And we have had that as our theme. But we still, we still need our land to be healed. Amen? We still need to humble ourselves. We still need to seek His face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still must turn away from sin and all wickedness in order to truly change. Amen? Right? Is that still all right to say? Hallelujah. Even though our Christianity, though, is not a behavior modification. It's not. Because if it's all about modifying your behavior, amen, that's you doing it. God don't modify behavior. He changes hearts. Amen? Can I talk about it? Give me my next uh, teaching point. True repentance changes the heart which corrects behavior. 
if you tell them they just got to stop it and their heart don't change, they're going to do it again. Mm. Oh, I wish I had to. T-Man was stuck in that stuff going on in Rocky Mountain. Can I play the organ for myself? <laughs> Anybody heard from him? Is he okay? Did he get out of there and everything? Yeah, we needed to remember him in prayer. But um, from all, look, true repentance changes the heart, which corrects the behavior. Amen? I need, if my behavior is going to change, it's got to come from a true heart. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've said before, true freedom is not just telling yourself not to do something anymore. True freedom is not having the desire to do it anymore. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't quit seeking God until you are delivered. You can be delivered. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Alcoholism runs in your I believe that. I believe it. Because it's a satanic curse. Just like depression. Just like drug addiction. They're all a bondage. Amen? You know my past. You know my testimony. I understand all that. But can I tell you, you can press through. And you can overcome. Come on, somebody. You are more than an overcomer. More than a conqueror. You're an occupier. And the enemy don't have to wreck your life. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. True repentance changes the heart which corrects the behavior. Now, just as his father David wrote, this is, this is Solomon writing this now. Just as his father David wrote psalms on prayer, Solomon wrote wise, godly proverbs that here showed his heart for the power of prayer. Proverbs 15 and 8 says this, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Prayer of the upright. Bible says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. Walk is likened unto how we live each day. Amen? He says, the prayer of the upright is his delight. Not the prayer of those hiding. Not the prayer of those lying. The prayer of those who are walking upright. The wisest man to ever live endorses prayer as a delight to God. Prayer is thoughtful towards God like a unique gift. As I get older, I appreciate unique gifts. Hallelujah. I got a coffee cup from some new members of the church from a hawk's nest or something like that. It fits perfect in my Keurig K-cup thing. And when something like that happens, I get tickled to death. Amen about it? If somebody gives me a shirt. I told Pastor Tim, I love your champion t-shirts. And he fought me like one or two of them. Amen? I love a unique gift. My wife for my birthday. Amen? I, I told her, I said, listen, finishing the house, don't buy me anything for my birthday. She walked in the house with some new clothes, and she made me a lasagna, and she made me a cake, and all of that. And I was like, Knows the way to my heart. <laughs> and my mother has recently given me gifts of things that belong to my father and belong to my grandfather. And they're so unique. And my God, they just went up in value to me. Something I might would have just passed by idly. Oh, there that is. And now I look at it and it's worth a million dollars to me. You see... He endorsed prayer as a delight to God as it was a gift. How many know to have a strong, personal, intimate relationship, you have got to give unique gifts? Hallelujah. It's a relationship builder with God just as it is with others. And then Proverbs 15, 29 says this. Solomon wrote this. He said, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Amen. I want him to hear my prayer. Hallelujah. You might have done something wicked. You might have said something wicked. You might have thought something wicked, but you don't have to become wicked. Amen. How many choose righteousness still in 2022? Hallelujah. The truth is to remind God's people that our prayers have not fallen on deaf ears. He hears the prayers of the righteous. 
When we've made our hearts right with him in humble and honest repentance, our God hears our prayers and is delighted by it. He's a good, good father, can I get an amen, that wants to hear from his children in this special and powerful way. Give me my last teaching point of the night. Prayer changes things, and the first thing it changes is you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you won't, come on, you're going through something, you're going through a dry season. You're you're worried about gas prices. You're worried about all these different things. Can I tell you to pray? You're upset because a lost loved one or a wayward son or daughter, a backslid brother or sister hasn't come to the house of God yet. Can I ask you to pray? Come on, somebody, you've got some heavy things, dramatic things, things going on in your life that you did not ask for in any way, shape, or form, and you just want to fall down in a corner, put blankets over the window, watch Netflix all day, and forget about everything. Can I tell you, you can still pray. Amen? Amen. Pray and faint not. Prayer changes things. If you pray about it, that thing's going to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you don't have any unforgiveness in your heart. Make sure you go by those five steps. Make sure you praise him. Make sure you declare his glory. Make sure you declare your faith in him. Amen? And prayer will begin to change things. And the first thing it changes, though, is you. You. I want to be stronger for him. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could just lay down and just cry every day if I wanted to. Losing my father was the greatest tragedy in my life, and it broke my heart like nothing else. But there is something already in me that says I can't stay down. I didn't have a daddy that would have wanted me to stay down. You see, I have been assigned this region, and I've been assigned this region to win souls for the kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. This ain't never been about my life because it ain't about my life now. It's all about Christ's life in me. Amen? And if you'll help me, we will win some people. To the Lord and get them ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I was going to write a song that I felt like, and I I didn't even think it was going to be a Christian song, so I know it won't end the will of God. I I felt like it was almost going to be a country song to say, and it was going to be called When Daddy Was Alive. But then I said, you know, and it was all, man, it was just gentle, but it was, wait a minute, wait a minute, my daddy's not dead. I mean, even though that song kind of sounds catchy, amen, I might give it Adam Stone, take it to Nashville, Tennessee or something, amen, hallelujah, I, it's not what I believe, my dad is not dead, hallelujah, I have seen a vision of him, amen, hallelujah, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, when you have a relationship, amen, that relationship with Christ is built on prayer, and the reason a lot of people, amen, are dried up in their relationship with Christ is because Christians just don't want to pray no more, amen, but come on, I've been, he's been telling people to pray since day one, he's been wanting to commune with his people since day one, and he's as hungry to have a relationship with you as he ever was with any of the Old Testament patriarchs you mean as much to him as Moses and Abraham and David come on somebody and he did amazing things through those people hallelujah Hallelujah. but they prayed amen we need to pray. Our country's going backwards. People are, come on, people are selling out. There's an entire generation that's raised up, don't even believe what you believe in your Bible, and they live in your house. Amen? We will not lose a generation to Satan. They're coming in the rapture. Amen? They're going to be ready for heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As I close tonight, when you have faith in the power of God through prayer, prayer will change things. How many would agree with that tonight? Did you enjoy this little Bible study? Come on, Pastor Tim. Hallelujah. You come on. You come on. You can sneak on the set. Nobody look at Pastor Tim. Amen. Oh, there he is. Now, working late, man. Aren't we thankful for this great man of God? Worked all day. 
Hallelujah. All right, we want to go ahead and get our prayer request at this time, but uh, I know you missed some of that. But basically, we want the power of prayer in our lives. We have a great example there in the Word. And I want you to think about the things that Solomon and David endured and the things they went through, the turmoil in their family, okay, the sins they committed. They were both filled with lust. They both had a whoremongering, cursive spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. These guys want choir boys. They want bo Boy Scouts. They were rough. Amen. But how many know that God can take somebody that's rough and make a king out of them? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, at this time, we're going to be praying for Mary and Pulley. This is Brother Leon Pulley's mother. And uh, she recently went home to be with the Lord. She was only 61 years old. Leon is only 31 years old. And he has some issues, too, with his health. And so he's just a great young man. I, I got a chance to spend some time with him this past Sunday. And, man, uh, he's a good guy. I, I, I love him. And so let's be lifting Leon up. And Leon has recently made CFC his new church home. So he's wrapping up his mother's uh, business here, and he's going to be back with us real soon. Bobby Lane, this is Sister Carol's husband. He is in kidney failure, and we just pray for him tonight. Amen. And Pete Outlaw is in the hospital with fluid around the heart and the lungs. Amen. What do we have here? Prayers for Connor House. This is Brother Neil's cousin. He is at Pitt with an unknown illness and has been sick for two weeks. Doctors don't know what is going on but God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then there's Betty Leak had a uh, colonoscopy, and one of the polyps came back precancerous. We'll be sent more information on procedures to do. And we're claiming absolute healing and wholeness there. Pamela Green says, remember her brother Chris in prayers. And, uh, and then Betty Leak is asking for prayer that God knows the need. Remember my wife. I, I thought that she may have COVID again. But she does not. She tested negative. But she's been very sick for several days. And so, amen, uh, instead of coming here tonight and crying on your shoulder, God reminded me a while ago before I left the house that I have authority. And so I began to claim tonight. And I began to claim then my wife's healing. And I'm believing when I get home, I'm going to perkiness in her eyes. Amen. But she's, uh, she's been feeling rough for the last few days, very congested, uh, doing a whole lot of coughing. But like I said, took, took the test and was negative. And, and so uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, thank God for that. But whatever it is, you know, I guess people are getting sick with something besides that these days. Amen. Uh, so anyway, we're believing. Amen. Brother. Amen. Sorry to hear that. Yes. Well, absolutely, we're going to believe that. In fact, we'll uh, we will lay hands on you and pray for for her uh, here in just a moment. Too. Anybody else tonight? How many know God can? Amen. Watch this tonight. Let's. Got one? Yeah. right. Denise Driver, she's been new to our church too. And her father just passed away. You got one, Pearson? Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Let's lay hands on this prayer list tonight. Father, we come right now. And God, we just ask you, Lord God, in your majesty, in your power, in your glory, in your awe and wonder and your authority and your massive mighty hand Lord God we ask you right now Lord Jesus to heal to turn situations around God we just praise you tonight we love you Lord oh you're the king of kings you are the creator Lord God of heaven and earth Lord God we relish in your majesty Lord God we praise you for your honor we thank you for your loving kindness, Lord God. Oh, and your tender mercies. 
God, we just bless your name and we praise you, Lord Jesus. And we declare tonight, Lord God, in every situation that's been spoken, Lord God, both on the list, Lord God, and by the word of the people in the church, Lord God, we are claiming total wholeness and healing. We're, we're claiming breakthroughs, Lord Jesus. We're, we're, we're claiming restoration. We're claiming restitution. Oh, we thank you, God, for redemption, deliverance, salvation. Healing. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, for courage, Lord Jesus. When fear tries to knock us down, God, we serve a God that fills us with courage, Lord God, and strength. God, we pray right now. We pray for every family, Lord God, that's lost a loved one. We pray for those, Lord God, where death has visited their family, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that blessed hope and that we are to be people, to continue to be people who live. Because we know we have the hope in you. God, we just praise you. We love you, Lord God. We're claiming breakthroughs in every single situation for every person right now. Under the sound of my voice that has a, a, a vision of a prayer request in their spirit, let them see right now in their spirit. Let them see somebody breaking through. Let them see somebody being made whole. Let them see somebody being made well. Let them see somebody being made delivered, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us have the vision as we claim and have faith for it, Lord God, because we know the blessing is ours to have. We praise you and we love you in Jesus' holy name. Somebody say amen. 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 How many know that he can and he will? Amen. Can we thank our online audience? We'll see you back 10 a.m. Sunday. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast, or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples Marriage Ministry. We love you. We want you to, to sow into the church, be a part of the church. Come on. We love you. If you got saved today, you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, then we want you to message us right here on our page, and we will call and pray for you. Again, thank you for tuning in today. Pastor Tim, what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today? We pray if this message has reached you, because we're all about kingdom vision. Amen. Come see us. Well, you, we got to seek just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.